how, how was last night how was last night let's welcome this morning again the president of eternity Inter Inter international if you hear when i call it joshua koinonia <laughs> let's welcome apostle joshua selman <laughs> speak to our hearts this morning in this atmosphere of power and of worship we bow our hearts before you and we declare that our ears are attentive to hear the things that you will be speaking unto us for the Bible declares that the entrance of your word gives light and understanding unto the simple we have come to receive both light and understanding Grant us access to your word this morning and to Jesus be all the praise. For in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. God bless you. Please be seated. Let's give Pastor Shola again a big, big God bless you. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. So yesterday we began to discuss along the theme of this conference isaiah chapter 60 we read verse 1 to 3 19 and 20 says arise shine for your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you the next verse says for darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people it says but upon you the glory of the lord shall arise verse 3 says that gentiles shall come to your light and their kings to the brightness of your rising when we read verse 19 19 says 60 and 19 the sun shall no longer be your light by day nor the nor for brightness shall the moon give light unto you but that the lord will be your everlasting light and your god your glory 20 it says your sun shall no longer go down nor shall your moon withdraw itself for the lord will be your everlasting light and that the days of your morning shall be ended hallelujah we define light from scripture that every time you are talking about light from a scriptural standpoint it means two things number one for a recap it means illumination and revelation Every time the Bible talks about light, it refers to illumination and revelation. You are enlightened to the degree to which you have access to revelation and illumination. And then number two, we said light is that which makes what is hidden to be made manifest. For the Bible says everything that makes manifest is light. Ephesians 5.13 That everything that makes manifest is light hallelujah ephesians chapter 5 and verse 13 it says but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light for whatsoever dot made manifest is light so the assignment of light is to reveal that which has been locked up and has been hidden and i did tell us yesterday <clears throat> that the system of the kingdom was so designed that your excelling your rising your dominion as we call it is predicated upon the degree of and the intensity of light that you have that two believers can receive salvation as a potent experience but never have an opportunity to walk in the experience of that which is captured in that zoe life in as much as the life of God that we have received is full of infinite possibilities, releasing them experientially depends on our access to light. Ephesians 4.18. Please do not forget this background. Having the understanding darkened, it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Are we together? 
because of the blindness ephesians 4 18 because of the blindness of their hearts and so contending for light becomes your personal responsibility a commitment to seeing the glory of god rise in experience in and through your life knowing that my excelling my dominion depends on my access to light i must make it a point of duty to intentionally and structurally pursue light are we together darkness has an assignment to keep hidden darkness has an assignment to keep under subjugation and servitude every time light comes it comes with it liberation the bible says that everything that makes manifest is light in fact the power of darkness is shrouded in secrecy and darkness there are a class of spirits called rulers of darkness that means their dominion thrives in the atmosphere of darkness are we together our assignment according to first peter chapter 2 and verse 9 apostle peter was teaching us how that we he says but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people he said that you should show forth the praises of him that hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light that means your life should be a validation of this statement that it should be evident from your life that the believer has been called out of darkness into his marvelous light may that be your testimony in jesus name dominion in any area is predicated upon the light the level of light that you have the bible says that was the true light that lighted every man we did establish that that there are false lights lights information that carry a semblance of liberty but in the presence of real life situation they do not sustain the power to liberate if it does not liberate it is not light the bible says that was the true light that lighted every man remember even satan himself appears as an angel of light the bible does not call him an angel of light an angel means a messenger of light so just because you have access to truth does not mean it will bless you are we together and just because that information came from god does not mean it will automatically bless you you must be guided sequentially i hope you know that satan i said it yesterday that satan is also god's creation the fallen angels are also god's creation the bible says and nothing that was without him was not anything that was made provided it is created it came from god but it does not mean that satan would bless you and it does not mean that demons will bless you so don't just say because it is from god it will bless me no satan tried to use it is written in tempting jesus just because you locate it from the bible does not mean it will automatically bless arbitrarily Otherwise, why would he send us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth? John chapter 16 from verse 12 and 13. He says, I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come? He says he will guide you into all truth. Just because you have access to truth does not mean it will bless you. You must be guided to be able to use that truth like a key. An individual can hold a bunch of keys and still go around in confusion around a house because you must be taught the dynamics of using them. Is that true? Modern doors right now come with superior security technology. You can be given a card or whatever. Sometimes they use your iris, they use different parts of your body and you can stand there having the potential for access and yet that door does not open because you must be taught how to use the key there are keys you have to turn three times in fact others three and a half is that half that opens the door you miss that half you can still stand as though the door is not open is that true there are cards that you have to swipe there are others you have to press in there are so many things so believers just because you have access to the truth does not mean that it will bless you the holy ghost must guide you 
Are we together? There are five levels of light. That's why we stopped yesterday. That there are five levels of light. Spiritual illumination. That every believer that seeks to become a manifestation of the glory of God in experience. You must press for, pursue and have access to these five levels of light. Let me recap very quickly and then we'll finish off from where we left off last night. Are we still together? Number one, that the first dimension of light every believer must contend for is the knowledge of God the Father and of Jesus his Son. That is the first level of light. If you desire to make sense of your spiritual experience, it's important for you to stop chasing after shadows just because they are spiritual. I told us yesterday there are many things believers are looking for that does not carry any spiritual value as far as the revelation of Christ is concerned. It's important for us to limit blind pursuits and focus with laser precision the areas and the aspect of truth that will be beneficial to us as far as the revelation of Christ is concerned and then the glorification of the saints. There, the realm of the spirit is a realm with vast possibilities and access to so much knowledge. In fact, here's what the preacher said about knowledge. He said of reading many books, there is no end and much study is a weariness unto the soul. He said, here is the conclusion of the matter to fear God and to keep his whole commandments. His commandments, he said, for this is the whole duty of man. There is no end to the potential knowledge that a man can accumulate. But I say to you sincerely. Do not make the mistake of the scribes and the Pharisees, for they were not ignorant people. Jesus said, you search the scripture, for in them you think you will. They were full of knowledge, but useless based on God's program, because that knowledge could not profit them. It didn't help them identify the Messiah. It didn't help them live in true righteousness. It didn't help them bless other people. In fact, it was because of the kind of knowledge they had that they closed the door, Jesus said, that they would not enter and they would not allow others enter. So we are getting to a point in the church and in our Christian experience where we have to begin to vet and edit the kind of light that we seek. He said that was the true light that lighted every man. Are we still together? So that the first dimension of revelation in order of priority that every believer must seek to pursue is the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Daniel eleven thirty two. But the people that do know their God, the B part, they shall be strong, capacity, and they shall do exploits. Your exploits in this kingdom is predicated upon your knowledge of God. Situations and circumstances will challenge you, man of God. They will ask you who sent you. The forces that that align themselves across territories to abort the purposes of God would not just give you right of way and passage into a territory. Like Moses, they will say, "Who sent you?" You have to know God. He says this is eternal life john 17 3 he says that they may know thee the one true god and jesus whom thou hast sent this is eternal life are we still together we must contend to know god job was speaking i think in chapter 42 or so and he says i have heard of thee with the hearing of the ear but now my eyes see at you a deeper richer experience it is a risk to stand before situations and circumstances and advocate a god you do not know hallelujah an experience with god gives you confidence you know but I know whom I have believed, he said, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. Number two, we said the second dimension of light that all believers who desire to grow, desire to excel and to reveal Christ and see his glory revealed in them. The second dimension of knowledge is that you must know who you are 
in light of who Christ is. The implication of the pursuit of God is that it helps you reveal who you are to you. Because you see, man outside of the help of God is many-sided and many-dimensional. It was Paul himself that began to communicate his frustration saying on one side on one hand there is an apostle in me but in another hand i see some other laws working in my members he did not hide his frustration that there was a mix of the life of the spirit and the life of the flesh cohabiting within the same entity and he said, so that the things I want to do, I do not find myself doing them. And the things I do not want to do, I find myself doing them. He said, oh wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Then chapter 8 now of Romans and verse 1 begins. He says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. But not just being in Christ Jesus alone. You can be in Christ Jesus. But he said, those who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit is that true verse 2 says for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death verse 3 says what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh god sending his own son and then it continues like that it is not just those who are in christ jesus but those who walk after the spirit because there are two laws here there is the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus then there is a the law of sin and death when you know god then you begin to know who you are in light of who he is because the bible says for as he is so are we here and now paul in his pauline epistles did a very sound exegesis of the believer's identity in Christ right from the book of Colossians down to Ephesians in fact theologically speaking the book of Ephesians is about the most classic representation it holds about the richest capture of the believer's identity in Christ he begins from chapter 1 and chapter 2 by telling us christ's exalted position by reason of his death his burial and resurrection then he now introduces the believer and he tells us that we have been raised up with that christ that means he did not ascend alone he died alone but in covenant we died with him is that true that we have been raised up with him and we have been made to sit it's called our positional advantage far above principalities powers thrones dominions and every name that is named both in this world and that which is to come it is a revelation that you must have then the bible calls us heirs of god and joined heirs with christ hallelujah the bible calls us the righteousness of god in christ jesus do you believe that apostle john was teaching and he said behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of god he says now are we the sons of god and it does not yet appear notice he didn't say later now it's a reality even though we are working to manifest that reality but it's a fact from the realm of the spirit that we are the sons of god that we are recipients of the spirit of god and we have come into a point of oneness for it says he that does not have his spirit is none of his the spirit of god living in us has brought us to a point of oneness in ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 amplified paul says finally brethren be strong in the lord he says draw your strength from your union with him the basis of your strength and your capacity in the spirit is your union with him say i am one with christ very simple basic revelation but it is very powerful it turned the generals that have gone ahead of us who have joined the cloud of witnesses today from ordinary men to signs and wonders hallelujah it's important that we know this have i not said i have said ye are god psalm 82 and verse 6 and all of you are children of the most high not some of you i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high the next verse says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes man that is in honor and knoweth not perisheth like the beast of the field that means if you do not understand the positional advantage that you have 
both in terms of your elevated position in Christ and then your oneness by reason of your access to his spirit, you will never truly be able to manifest the light. If we're together, say amen. amen. You must have the revelation of who God is. And then you must know who you are. If you start by exploring who you are, you're already in trouble because you need a guide and you need a reference point. In geography, there's what they call true north. It's a position that guides a reference from wherever you are. It is dangerous to begin to explore self-discovery without knowing God because there are many templates. There must be a basis for your pursuit. Science has an opinion of who you are sociology has an opinion of who you are culture has an opinion of who you are your failures have an opinion of who you are is that true your job has an opinion of who you are it's important you throw those things away and find out what god has said you are and then begin to grow into that which he has said hallelujah Number three, what is the third dimension of light that every believer must contend for? You must know your place in God's program and in destiny. Please write it down. You must know your place in God's program and in destiny. This is very important. If you cannot find your place, this is where your self-confidence is, is your self-confidence is is um is concretized when you know that i am not a known entity i'm not one of the seven or eight billion people loitering around this planet that i came for a reason hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7 lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me this was about jesus now you must find where it is written concerning you we said yesterday in jeremiah chapter 1 reading from verse 5 jeremiah was receiving a revelation about his mandate and his role as far as god's program is concerned and he said while you were in your mother's womb before thou camest forth he says i sanctified thee and ordained you to be a prophet to the nations and that conversation continued down up until verse 12 the boy was trying to cry and say listen i have a disadvantage of age i'm a little boy and he said say not that i'm a little boy if he wants about saying i'm a little boy it also applies say not i am a woman say not i am a man say not i come from a family where no one has risen but whatsoever i tell you to do and whosoever i send you to this is very powerful I did mention yesterday and is worthy of mention again we're gathered today listen let me tell you obedience to the call and finding your place in God's program is very important because there usually are many destinies listen carefully this is the implication of finding your place there are many destinies that are at the mercy of your discovery you know the purposes of God and kingdom advance is like a relay if you've watched people run a relay everyone has a space usually 100 meters or thereabout am i right on that someone is waiting for the efficiency of another person it's amazing that they will rate the whole runners as a team not as individuals so it does not matter who started first if somebody within that that relay set compromises on their speed they can ruin the effort of others this is how it is that's why it's not important to clap for yourself that you are doing well alone another person's carelessness can rubbish everything you have done you have prayed you have fasted but you handed the baton to a lazy and unserious christian when you understand this mentality your individual success is not the only factor that will be considered as far as the health of the church is concerned it will be the holistic growth of the believer are we together yes you must find your place you must find your place there are many of you right now 
the revival coming depends on many things many dimensions you see um the bible says there were many widows in zarephath are we still together there were how many widows say many the bible says to none was elijah sent that means there were many widows we don't know what happened to those widows but we know that god is a husband to the widow so we know that there must have been a system for him to protect the interests of the rest we only know the story of one man elijah and the widow he met is that true the shunammite woman i believe was still alive when elijah was alive but there was no mention of elijah having an encounter with her his encounter was to zarephath because another person had been mandated imagine if elisha never found his place it means a woman would have died barren and you would have said that is the will of god whereas the answer was tied to someone's walking in purpose are we together now it is amazing how our refusal to walk in purpose will continue to misrepresent the potential of god's power when god speaks about his possibilities he says that because the ability to manifest what he has said is captured in somebody's assignment for instance if god says i'm arising and i'm moving mightily in lagos he's saying that because he expects that there are people already positioned in purpose who can receive his speakings and translate them through the sacrifice of alignment to a potent revival if there are no men god will say many things that will not come to pass because this is the world of men the heaven of heavens belong to the lord the bible says but the earth has he given the sons of men so don't just get there jumping around and say god said it it must happen in terms of his sovereignty you are right but in terms of our covenant responsibilities there are many things god said that did not happen even the declaration about the redemption of men remain in the realm of the spirit until god became a man himself and came to act it out right from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain but nobody was saved from that reality the salvation was administered at the instance of a god becoming a man dying physically not by parables shedding his blood physically resurrecting physically let it not be that when you stand before christ you will see one billion people looking at you and say if only you press towards that kingdom financier mantle our churches wouldn't have died we wouldn't have delved into divination in trying to look for money to build a church our rising was connected to your assignment and because you failed it affected our efficiency maybe there is an intercessor somewhere that god is raising you like anna the prophetess if you don't pray jesus will not come it is not about jesus coming it's about anna the prophetess praying until he arrives she prayed for more than 60 years for the arrival of jesus hallelujah if you are joseph make sure you do not allow israel to die in egypt they are waiting for you if you are esther make sure you do something about her man and his determination to annihilate the people of god esther the mantle is on you not even mordecai can be the deliverer the mordecai can help you and introduce you to the palace but the mantle for the salvation of the jews is upon you if you are ruth make sure you are a diligent lady so that you can meet boaz on account of your diligence and eventually let jesus arrive through your lineage if you do have the time may i respectfully recommend that you listen to my message redefining revivals it's a very powerful message i teach there on the prophetic and apostolic structure of the coming revival because the idea most of us have about the revival coming is that we're only going to be praying and fasting and healing the sick that is a big mistake that has de it has deceived the church for a very long time the bible in hebrews chapter 11 calls certain people elders go and research on them some of those elders were men of god some of those elders were governmental personalities like daniel some of those elders were economic giants all together the bible calls them elders so if you are daniel 
make sure you are careful so that you don't do the training of elijah because you will end up acting like elijah in babylon and they will drive you away because that is not the protocol for bringing liberty if you are Ruth, make sure you don't act like esther stay with naomi naomi is the only person who can make ruth ready for boaz when you know your assignment you can know who should mentor you you don't just guess people based on passion you guess it based on purpose if you are elisha look for elijah if you find mordecai calling you respect him but run away mordecai cannot make elisha if you are esther make sure you are careful don't look for deborah esther will make you be deborah may make you behave like vashti because she's a warrior and they will drive you out of the palace every call has a protocol and a training is someone learning already maybe this is why god brought you to church there are some of you here right now you are esther but you are going through elijah's training you are going to become something else you will not become evil but you will not be fit for the purpose find out who you are because everything in this bible is a parallel there are still elijah's there are still esther's so if god tells you you are esther go and start studying the book of esther you would start learning character and humility and wisdom these were the tools that esther needed are we together if you are elijah and all you are looking for is economic solutions you will kill god's people because you need to understand the dynamics of power you are going to be contending against jezebel and the prophets of baal there's no time for discussion you will need to understand the dynamics of fire and power question who are you in light of God's program if you are yet to find a name for yourself then you must go with the Word of God he found where it was written concerning him are we together now all things are lawful but I tell you not all things are expedient as far as producing the character of the Christ is concerned there are many people who have no business starting a church or holding a mic they just did not know what to do with their zeal and since they were not mentored properly to know that even within the economy and government you are still an elder you are still a witness they feel the only thing you do with unusual zeal is to get into ministry and now they are on stage preaching and that revelatory grace is not there because it was not part of the equipping and they are struggling they will not give way the person who should be there has been robbed because of their inability to be there and they are inefficient there but when you sit down discussing economic solutions they can talk from morning till night and they have refused to explore that potential can i tell you what i am doing on stage now and what an entrepreneur is doing right now building an estate for us and what an investor is doing trying to bring resources for us are we together and what an intercessor is doing is the same as far as achieving purpose is concerned so when you go to work tomorrow imagine me preaching and imagine yourself walking is a relay that is revival happening if i preach well and you compromise on your company standards you will be ineffective there and the blessing that should come from there that should eventually get to me are we together yes when you know that when we all converge like this we celebrate and rejoice and thank god but you never get intimidated or feel lesser for the kind because of the nature of our assignment they seem to carry many dimensions of charismatism if you understand what i'm saying usually if you're a preacher having a congregation you seem to be projected a little more than someone who is doing something but in the realm of the spirit it is with respect to your your revealing christ that is the scorecard when jesus walked upon the earth he did not walk naked the person who prepared his clothes if that person failed in his responsibility it will still affect the efficiency of jesus if jesus was on his way going to the cross and simon the of cyrene was not there imagine if simon did not wake up that day because of laziness jesus would have died not on a tree and he had to die on a tree to be a cause you need to understand the various roles that piece themselves together someone shout i am important
let the devil hear you shout i am important <laughs> mama don't say i don't have any role to play it took naomi to build ruth if ruth had gone to meet boaz the way she went with the pride of a young lady he would drive her from day one and say go back home they didn't train you well but naomi sat with ruth and began to mentor her and say when you get to Boaz, behave in a certain way and boaz said i don't know what who this lady is but make sure nobody harasses her in this farm because character and virtue have value are we together please listen carefully there are mothers that may never have the opportunity to preach on the pulpit but they are the ones who are mentoring the next dimension of giants that will give birth to the prophets everyone is important as far as god's program is concerned when you know that you kill the spirit of competition and looking down on others immediately say it again that i am important so mog the next time you see the people around you from the cleaner in your house to the one who washes your car don't look down on them and feel they are servants of a man of god they are all together fulfilling purpose to the end that jesus christ be revealed if you are with me shout a loud amen, amen. as much as i'm shouting and preaching now later on i'm going to be hungry true or false at that point that is when the robber will hit the road because by the time i'm hungry i need another ministry beyond me no matter how i'm uh, how anointed i am that condition will force me to reach out say reach out prophesy say reach out to reach out yes you can be very intelligent and sound in scripture but the day you are confused you will need the prophetic like a deer panting for water because age-long confusion can come to an end in a moment make it a point of duty to respect every dimension of kingdom service available are we together now number four we stopped at three so i'll give you the fourth now are we still together to see you high and leaf Tear up you are shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 we'll see you high and lift it up you are shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 hallelujah you must know your place in god's program your relevance is in finding your place your value is in finding your place your reward is in finding your place number four are you ready now the fourth dimension of light you must contend for is that you must know and understand the mysteries of the kingdom you must know and you must understand the mysteries or the principles of the kingdom knowing God is wonderful that is an experience knowing yourself and your identity your worth in Christ plants in you a healthy confidence and the bible says to cast not away your confidence for it has a great recompense of reward number three knowing your place in god's program and in destiny is very profitable but then you must understand the modus operandi of the kingdom you must understand the mysteries of the kingdom matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 the bible says it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven job chapter 38 and verse 33 very powerful question that the lord asked job knowest thou the ordinances of heaven 
and canst thou establish or set the dominion thereof i think it's niv or one of these versions that gives it another expression very powerful he says do you know the laws of the heaven and can you set up god's dominion over the earth you don't set up dominion just by intention you must know the laws that govern the heavens in fact let's read to 35 kjv now 35 it says can you raise your voice to the clouds that abundance of water may cover you that means there's something there's a relationship between your voice and abundance do you know the mystery that you can stand in one position and like elijah you can call abundance of water from wherever it is to come to your location 35 it says can you send lightnings that they may go and say unto you we are obedient here we are do you know this is what diviners do they have paid the price through divination to master the laws of the cosmos and the laws of the spirit you watch magicians and all these things they do there is absolutely nothing they are doing it's a it's a manipulation of spiritual laws science is discovering other dimensions now with artificial intelligence and virtual reality they are finding out that there are other planes and dimensions beyond that which we have been taught all we see is not all there is for sure who would have imagined that you will stand in one position and pick your call and say hello to someone and in a moment out of the seven billion people that number will not make a mistake and while you are walking around usually within a place where you know the broadband is there it will not even affect the network you can enter your room you can be in the toilet and talking and the person you are talking to does not even know you are moving around i remember years ago when nitel i think used to connect lines if rain falls and one line caught you carry ladders all around you will search laboriously till you find and may god help you that you are not sensitive and something shocks you there that could be the end of your life but now technology has gone who would have known that with precision in 50 minutes entering an object called a plane an aircraft you can move from one location to the other the farthest location in nigeria is from Maiduguri to lagos i think there about one hour 10 minutes or 15 minutes there about and that's it on road two and a half journey minus arm robbers minus trouble minus bad road are we together look at me i just said all of that to tell you only god knows the vast possibilities that your life can command at the instance of the knowledge of spiritual laws spiritually there are people who are still using handphone where they they strike you know that one zero eight then you wait for it to go back 10 that kind of analog approach will make you a victim of anything even if not satan anything at all but there are people who have stayed with god by reason of knowledge please look at me let me tell you sincerely our possibilities are predicated upon the vastness of our knowledge there is the place for the prophetic there is a place for giving there is a place for diligence there is a place for prayer there is a place for confession of the word there is a place for the unity of the faith do you know these laws it says knowest thou the ordinances of heaven this is the reason why god has planted pastors jeremiah 3 15 and i will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart 3 15 jeremiah that they will feed you with knowledge and understanding are we together acts chapter 20 and verse 20 please give it to us acts 20 20 here's what apostle paul said and how i kept back nothing that was profitable unto you but i have showed you and i have taught you publicly from house to house i didn't keep back anything provided it was a mystery that will make for your stature and development what is why it is dangerous to run away from the house of god he says when i came to the house of god then understood i there is understanding in the house of god which of the mysteries of the kingdom do you not know 
there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth the bible says there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to penury do you know that do you know that if two shall agree as touching anything it shall be granted unto them do you know that there is a place for prophetic intercession ezekiel 22 and verse 30 i sought for a man who would stand in the gap and i did not find any are you aware that and by a prophet the lord god brought israel out of egypt and by a prophet were they preserved are you aware that if you believe in the lord you shall be established but if you believe in his prophets you shall prosper are you aware that a diligent soul shall be made fat and that him that waters shall be watered are you aware that a man's gift can make room for him i'm showing you the mysteries of the kingdom and it can bring him before great men are you aware that god is able to grant a man favor and it will end emptiness in your life exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 are you aware that many can be the affliction of the righteous but that the lord is able to bring him out of them all are you aware that the name of the lord is a strong tower and that the righteous can run into it not just call it run into it and they are saved are you aware that there are certain songs that are not special numbers they are called songs of deliverance the bible says at midnight paul prayed and sang is that true the jailers heard him and suddenly the mighty one the warrior came himself and the bible says all doors open which of the mysteries do you not know it is dangerous to not know what opens the door when you stand before it because sometimes you may not have a second chance you don't prepare for battle on the day of battle you prepare for battle before the battle cry for many of you now god has been using the intercession of many people to shield you give yourself to knowledge right now study submit yourself acts chapter 20 and verse 32 and now brethren he says i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified knowledge 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 what does it take to grow a church man of god well i don't know i'll find out on the way that's a risk that's a big risk do you know the principles he says i will multiply them they shall not be few i will glorify them they shall not be small but what is the key he says and i if i be lifted up from the earth he says that i will draw all men to myself jesus said in john 17 and verse 1 lifting up his eyes to heaven and praying he says the hour has come glorify now thy son that thy son may bring glory unto you he was a psalmist who said though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death he says i will fear no evil why for thou art with me he didn't say for thou takest me out of the evil the fact that you are with me should already take me away from that means there are times that God can take you out of the storm but there are times he will come to meet you in the storm either way just verify that he is there if you are sure he is there he says find peace if there is a storm rocking your boat verify who is sleeping whether it's Jonah or Jesus if Jonah is sleeping wake him up and say what are you causing in this boat because we left the shore fine what presents did you bring here but if it is Jesus know that you will arrive safely in fact even the prophet who was representing jesus said an angel has appeared unto me and he said there shall be no loss and they arrived safely at an island called melita ladies and gentlemen my encouragement to you huh, is obtain grace from god and stay with the word the word of god is the jurisdiction of your safety and rising except you want to be a herbalist and walk based on superstition and even that does not thrive in ignorance the bible never records satan as a foolish man not once in the bible he's a wicked man confirmed from scripture the father of liars confirmed from scripture but foolishness was never credited to satan in scripture when he came to jesus he said it is written learned enough quoted it verbatim for it is written he shall keep his angels charge over you satan is reciting scripture they will bear you up on their wings lest you dash your foot against the stone 
Jesus didn't say, no, 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 that's wrong quotation. He knew. Listen, your fortification in this kingdom is based on scripture. Remember the, the, the scripture that I showed you yesterday? I think that was Isaiah 8 20 or thereabout. That if they do not speak after this word, it is because there is no light in them. When you are full of light, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks or declares. Many of us, our the way that we communicate and the way that we verbalize situations show that we are not full of the word. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid of? A thousand may fall by my right and ten thousand by by my side and ten thousand by my right side but none shall harm me with my eyes shall i see and behold the reward of the wicked with long life shall i be satisfied and he will show me my show me salvation do you believe that when the devil looks at you and says do you know you are a useless person you are not an entity take him or you are an entity take him to genesis chapter 12 from verse 2 and 3 i will bless them that bless you and curse him that curseth you and he says in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed that means i have a role in seeing that the families of the earth become blessed hallelujah that you are fearfully and wonderfully made he said so he has called us into the beloved given us his spirit where we cry abba father when you become full of the word you know what to do the knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom do you know what to do when you are in a financial situation and there is no help coming tell me what you have learned what do you know this is a test of spiritual maturity. One of the indices that test spiritual maturity is, is, is a thorough comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom. The Bible says Jesus himself knew what to do. Is that true? Do you know what to do? Confusion is a sign of immaturity. Because when you rise higher, the haziness goes away. And there is exactitude and precision. When you meet a consultant other doctors maybe the resident doctors those doing their house job they may be confused about a situation but they consult with a man called a consultant is that true yes through the vastness of his study his research his global partnership and his experience he has attained onto a state where he can see something and say i remember this when I started my medical practice 35 years ago I met a situation like this I didn't understand it it was 25 years later you see maturity in the spirit means you have so worked with the spirit and the word that you can see the rhythm about life somebody can come crying and say nothing is happening in my life and you already know with a consultant's intelligence what the problem is and what the solution is not just blindly let us pray oh god the way we are all here now is only you no 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 how then are you a blessing you know we say all kinds of things and i'm sure it's just the mercy of god towards us but if it's to answer our prayer based on what we we should do as the bible defines many people's prayer will not be answered because it's just full of lamentation and ignorance god is moved by the feelings of your infirmity or touched but he's only moved by his word which he has even exalted above his name if God were to come and rescue people purely based on sentiments, he will first go to the children dying, not you. You will be on a long queue before he reaches you. I refuse to be a victim of situations and circumstances. I will submit myself to learn the ways of God. For therein, he says, you will find rest for your soul. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. He says, to stand ye in the way and ask. You ask for that old path. Wherein is the good way? He says, when you have found it, walk therein. And thou shalt find rest for your soul. Your Sabbath is not tied to the chronological passage of time, but your access to the mysteries of the kingdom. Open my, the eyes of my heart lord that's the prayer now open the eyes of my heart i want to see you 
I want to see you. This is not a special number this morning. Will you open the eyes of my heart, Lord? Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. What is it about my life that makes help to run away from me? I love God with all my heart, but why can't someone just look at me and want to help me? Because it does not work like that. There are laws in the spirit. People don't just come to help you. I have 10 children and none of them is even paying attention to me. Mama, being a mother is not the only reason why you will be helped. There is a factor called favor. As a young man, you've been saving to build, saving to build. As soon as you save, inflation swallows up everything. Thank God for your study of economics, but you must understand the economic system of the kingdom. Psalm 44 and verse 3. They got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them, but your right hand and thine arm, the light of your countenance, because thou hast a favor towards them hallelujah are we together now yes the arrows of darkness that is ending people's lives anyhow what makes you believe it will not come to you because jesus said satan cometh to me so you are not immune he will come but the only thing is that because you are full of the word listen it's a risk to walk in ignorance man of god what gives you the guarantee that 10 years from now you will be standing in ministry I love God. Is that true? Question. Did James not love God that he was beheaded and just died like that? No. He says, but I know whom I have believed and I'm persuaded, listen carefully, that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him. Not keep that which you want to protect. He only keeps what is committed to him. For as long as it is your ministry, your children, your family, you will take responsibility for preserving them. God only preserves what you hand over to him. Did you get that scripture? Many of us are under the labor of trying to preserve things today because no man by the arm of the flesh you do not know the variables that come to distort what god has given you so you hand over to him as a sign of humility when it belongs to him he makes it a responsibility to protect it i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded is that true that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him you know your ministry will last when you hand it over to him not just because you are preaching well if you think your ministry will remain because you are preaching well you don't know who members are go and find out through history that they can say become king today and say crucify him tomorrow it takes more than that. you you cannot risk your destiny like that hallelujah are we together what makes you believe that as you age you will not just die your organs will not deteriorate thank god for great doctors here and i'm a friend of of medical practitioners a lot of them in my life biology tells us that as you age naturally the organs in your body and all of those things but there is an advantage you can tap into is that true yes talking about joshua and caleb that even in old age that their physical strengths were not abated listen ladies and gentlemen it is what you believe that works for you not what is available they heard the word just like we did but the word did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it we release the sound of the heavens the sound of creation yahweh is here we release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is here. We cry holy, holy, holy unto Yeshua, Shekinah is here. When, when I understood the implication of my life and my call and the fact that I'll be traveling everywhere, 
I insisted that I must learn the laws of long life. No risk, no chances. Are we together? I'm not the one who flies the plane that carries me. So I must make sure the person flying it is controlled by a force that I'm in partnership with. Are we together? Most of us live very risky Christian lives. Plus God minus Satan, if it happens, let it happen. It's a dangerous way to live. My uncle promised me that except it's not a life, by next week, I should just come and receive one million. Hmm. Find out how many uncles said those kinds of things. Find out people whose parents even died and wrote their will. You are the one who will inherit this. And family members came and said, is it not in... Uh, that it is your own uncle? And yet people will come and say, no, we change it. He didn't know what he was saying when he was alive. The whole world lieth in wickedness. Let me not go ahead of myself. We still have one more and then we'll pray. Listen to me. Make a commitment under God in this year 2023 that you will be all out in search for the mysteries of the kingdom. Every time you come to church, as pastor is teaching, be attentive what mystery is he dishing out today don't just say i went to church wow powerful service my god i like this church wonderful what did you learn it says now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them if you do them if you do them you see the way people are crying you see what is happening in our nation sadly we are praying and declaring, engaging all the mysteries that we know to see that we correct the anomalies at a national level. This is the implication of access to the mysteries of the kingdom. When Jezebel, in partnership with the prophets of Baal, were bringing reproach to the people of God, Elijah did not come trying or test running what he was going to do. He came with certainty. He said, gather the prophets of Baal and all the 850 prophets, 1,000 prophets or thereabout. He says, let's go and meet at Mount Carmel. When they met there, he allowed them to start first. Say your rubbish, do whatever you have to do. I'm waiting. He waited from morning till the time of the evening sacrifice. They lacerated themselves in frustration and Baal would not answer because he understood that when you have the key of David, you can lock the heavens and no man can open it. He sat down with the confidence of the mystery he had. He even shouted, taunting them, shout, maybe Baal is asleep. And when it was time, he said get out of the way you thought he would just say god come mm -mm. it doesn't happen like that there are ordinances the bible says he rebuilt the altar and when he rebuilt the altar there was a sacrifice upon it then he said pour water upon it water is the ministry of the word look at the ingredients he combined for fire to fall so that if you are not combining those same ingredients the first thing was a restoration of the broken altar then there was a sacrifice upon it then the word of God came. He said, add more of the word. The word of God is not like salt. You add plenty. You know how women cook? They say a pinch of this. When it has to do with a word, a pinch of the word cannot bring fire. Mm -mm. So he said, pour water. Why will you pour water on something you want fire to come upon? Pour water again. When it was time, he said, now stand back. Watch the mysteries of the kingdom. And he called upon, listen, let me speak to someone from tonight, from today. You will command results by the excellency of the mysteries that you hold on to. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will command supernatural results by the excellency of the mysteries that you hold on to. The Bible says, James 5, Elijah was a man of like passion. That means there was nothing extraordinary. He was just a student of the mysteries of the kingdom. Please sit down. Please hear me. Believers, you are in Lagos here. Do you know that every city has gates? You can be in a city and yet not be there spiritually. That is why the blessings that come with that city cannot come to you. 
have you mastered the art of opening gates and doors do you know the mystery that changes the climate over territories and nations go and get the teachings and settle down open my eyes open my eyes there has to be a way around this why is I, I have my products my pharmacy my company but nobody is coming to buy my products don't just say people are bad or they are tribalistic you will just be talking human gibberish that does not produce results find out the mystery that brought the animals two by two seven by seven from the forest to noah's ark that is the same mystery that will bring customers to your shop do you what did noah chant across creation that made stubborn animals you try to hold even a goat and see how you make a fool out of you have you tried to hold goats or chicken and you'll be running around dogs they will be playing with your intelligence yet by a mystery a prophet stands in front of the ark and say you can come do you believe what i'm teaching you if it brought animals it can bring finances if it brought animals it can bring men if it brought animals it can bring opportunities you may have heard me say it again it is not what you are holding it is what is on your head I'm under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. This part of the song that I like, listen. I am victorious. I have overcome I am victorious I have you write prosperously because of truth which is light some of you you are seeing through this conference God is showing you that it is not God who is behind what is happening to you it is the signature of darkness limiting your life can i tell you without light this year will still be like last year i can tell you the truth regardless what calendar date almost every night looks the same whether it's 15 16 17 once it is night it still looks the same darkness make up your mind that it's not going to be the same in my life things must change and that is because i will have access to the mysteries of the kingdom number five and then we'll wrap up what is the fifth dimension of light you must contend for do not forget number one is the knowledge of god and of jesus his dear son number two is the knowledge of yourself in light of who christ is number three to find your place in god's program and in destiny number four a thorough comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom and finally the fifth dimension of knowledge you must know is that you must know your adversary the devil hmm this is one of the mysteries where God can bring light out of darkness. You have to know who Satan is. You have to know and understand the structure of the demonic realm and how to be able to administer the victory that is in Christ. For Paul, in mentoring the church in Ephesus, he broke his mentorship session into three. Number one, he taught them how to take advantage of their position in Christ and their oneness with Christ. Number two, he taught them the work of the believer, how to walk in wisdom, how to manifest the character of the kingdom, to walk in righteousness, a life that, were, that is worthy of their calling. And then number three, he taught them how to stand against the wiles of the enemy. Are we together now? 
you must know your adversary the devil first peter chapter 5 please from verse 8 and 9 let's read together first peter 5 8 9 first peter chapter 5 8 and 9 if you are a believer please shout it loud and clear as we read one to read be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour let's read verse 9 whom resist steadfast in the faith knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world you know what he's trying to say he says be sober be vigilant the word vigilant means be discerning and sensitive there are groups called vigilante group it comes from the word vigilant be responsive for your adversary he never calls the devil your friend your adversary the devil the bible says like a roaring lion a lion roars when it is angry when it is hungry or when it wants to establish territorial dominion these are the conditions upon which a lion roars it says a roaring lion walketh about the possibility and the probability that he will come around your neighborhood is 100 percent listen to what he told god in the presence about job he said from whence have you come the book of job he said from going to and fro the earth the earth is only far for you not for satan he can go to and fro he's that determined to find anybody he will destroy from nigeria africa to australia he will return back and to accomplish that he has a structure the devil himself has an organogram that he built paul given this by revelation no other person gave us the exegesis of the the demonic structure before paul arrived people only identified different demons beelzebub apollyon this and that the prophets types and shadows it was paul that brought a theological basis to demonology he said we wrestle not against flesh and blood is that true but against principalities against powers against rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high or heavenly places paul for you hallelujah and he was speaking about jesus and he even calls jesus the head of all principalities he acknowledged their presence that they are there it is a risk to others to act as though satan were not on earth he's here he's not dead he is defeated but not dead are we together revelation chapter 12 and verse 12 very scary scripture but you shouldn't be scared therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them woe to the inhabitants of the earth he says and of the sea for the devil is come down to you having great wrath because he knoweth that he had but a short time heaven had to lament that this rebel has now been thrown to this domain listen to me as at the time satan was thrown from heaven he left heaven as a disgraced defeated foe by the time jesus arrived he was already the prince of the power of the air i i told you out of the many things you credit to satan don't credit foolishness a man who left heaven as a defeated foe and a few years later on has deceived all the kings of the earth and collected the keys and had the audacity to meet jesus when he came and said finally bow to me and i will give you it's been given to me that means when you give satan a little hole just give him time and see what he will make out of that hole is that true so it says submit yourself to the mighty hand of god it says resist the devil don't resist him when the situation becomes complicated the moment you see his signature resist immediately how do you know his signature john 10 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy god does not steal God does not kill in as much as we know for wickedness and God does not destroy for wickedness. Everything is with respect to his divine purpose and his love. 
Satan steals, kills, destroys. You must resist the devil. You must resist the devil. 2 Corinthians 2.11 and then we'll find somewhere to pray. 2 Corinthians 2.11. Let's read together. 2.11. Ready? 1 to read. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices. The word devices there is his strategies his methodologies it says if you are ignorant of satan's modus operandi he will take an advantage of you he will take an advantage of you he will take an advantage of you five dimensions of light in your pursuit for spiritual things you must zoom your attention to these five areas the knowledge of god and of his son jesus christ number two the knowledge of yourself in light of who Christ is. Number three, finding your divine prophetic place in God's program and in destiny. Number four, accessing the mysteries of the kingdom, understanding the modus operandi of the kingdom. And then number five, understanding the wiles or the devices of the enemy. show me a man who has invested in these five dimensions and i show you a career of marvelous light marvelous light marvelous light marvelous light this is what jesus did jesus would set himself a time to pray communing with the father jesus will go to the temple learning the word submitting himself to scripture no wonder during his transfiguration he showed us an example of his spirit man and all we saw was light at his brilliance ladies and gentlemen please hear me if ever you are defeated in your christian life and experience if ever your life does not capture the glory of god to the measure that god expects of you it is because you have defaulted in your pursuit of one or more of these dimensions of light if you do not know god there is a consequence to not knowing him you will not be strong and you will not do exploits if you do not know yourself the devil will give you all kinds of pictures and you will run trying to be everybody else not knowing that he has exalted you number three if you do not find your place in life there is no possibility for being a blessing there is no possibility for being fulfilled Number four, if you are bankrupt of sufficient knowledge about the mysteries of the kingdom, then you know that there is no excelling for you because results are worked out. The Bible says to give all diligence to make your calling and your election sure. That means it is your responsibility to stop people from doubting what God has made you become. There is a participatory contribution that you have to make. And then number five, your victory establishing your dominion over principalities and powers wicked spirits that have been assigned to your life assigned to your mantle i i don't know if i've taught it in this church but when you understand the demonic structure you will know that there are spirits sent to men but there are spirits sent to mantles if you are elijah it is jezebel and the prophets of baal that will come for you there are many of us the challenges you are facing have nothing to do with your person it is what you are carrying there are spirits assigned to certain anointings there are spirits assigned to mandates when the devil comes into lagos he's not looking for an individual he's looking for whoever is carrying this mandate they walked through the scribes and the pharisees and they kept asking john are you the messiah we want to know there is we are not looking for individuals if you are not him we don't have any business with you when they found out that john when john said behold the lamb you know why john was beheaded many reasons but the realm of the spirit he deceived when the pharisees and the scribes came they were asking him are you the one he kept quiet 
the secret code that was given to him in the wilderness he did not reveal it until he saw jesus he said behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world and he baptized him and commissioned him into ministry and the realm of the spirit got angry with john and made sure that john died for it both john and jesus died because satan was interested in the mandate the mandate we have about a minute or two but hear me ladies and gentlemen many conferences have happened in this wonderful church many of you have attended many or all of them my prayer and my desire that this will be the one conference that elevates you to a position in the spirit an altitude in the spirit that as a man of god as a family man as an entrepreneur as a professional in your field of endeavor as one in ministry regardless what your practice is that this will be the conference that brings you to a position in the spirit you can know that you left home and came to church and you access something that will shift you to an elevated position even in the spirit hear me the devil is not afraid of everybody these are the kinds of people that he fears. Those who have paid the price to access light, greater light, superior light. How do you imagine that you access these five dimensions of light and then your life becomes ordinary? Is that true? Is it true that your life becomes ordinary if you know God and know Jesus? Is it true that your life becomes ordinary if you know who you are with respect to Christ? Is it true that your life becomes and remains ordinary when you find your place in purpose and you are walking in it? Is it true that your life becomes ordinary at the instance of your command of the mysteries of the kingdom? Is it true that your life becomes ordinary when you can decipher the devices, stratomai, of the evil one? It's impossible. Our time is up. We are going to pray and i will just speak over your life two things will happen here and i want you to please pay attention one will pray for a minute or two and i want you to give dedicated time you've you've personal led us so powerfully in worship i want you to pray and then all the prophetic declarations that will come upon you i want you to receive them receive them with all your heart are you ready to pray please open your mouth and thank god for the word you have received all through from day one of this conference even to this point lift your voice and thank him when he sends his word it is to heal and to deliver someone is saying thank you thank you Someone say thank you Jesus. Thank you. Thank you Jesus for your grace. Thank him for the word you just received. Everything that makes manifest is light. Everything that makes manifest is light. Everything that makes manifest is light. Hallelujah hallelujah isaiah chapter 2 and verse 5 that is our next prayer point isaiah 2 and verse 5 let's read it together please everyone ready one to read O house of jacob come ye and let us walk in the light of the lord one more time now that you have seen the excellency of that light it is a call that you obtain grace to walk in the light are you ready to pray lift up your voice and begin to cry lord i obtain grace to walk in the light i obtain grace to walk in the light i obtain grace to walk in the light i obtain grace to contend for light someone is praying someone is praying someone is praying oh house of jacob come ye 
and let us walk in the light of the Lord. O house of Jacob, O household of David, come ye, let us walk in the light, knowing the excellency of that light. Let us walk in the light. Come ye, let us walk in the light. Lord, I obtain grace to seek that light, that true light. Hallelujah. Now I'm about to speak over your life. You know what impartation is? Impartation is a deep prophetic mystery in the kingdom. You cannot end a conference like this without releasing these graces. There is nothing you cannot do. Help me. have said it then you will do it you have a track record of keeping your word and you're not about to stop doing it now sabare you are my me it is at the place of impartation that Saul the confused becomes Saul the prophet it is at the place of impartation that Jacob becomes Israel it is at the place of impartation that weak and beggarly people supposedly become mighty people in the spirit it says arise shine for thy light is come Amplified says, arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new light. Hallelujah. Impartation is not just a display of a man of God's anointing. Far from it. There are people who are disciplined and fear God truly. It's more than just showing that a man of God is powerful. No. There is a serious business of granting people access to the engracing that helps you to command certain results. Please hear me. Every limitation you have seen in your life, in one minute, I'd like you to pray that the anointing that dislodges that limitation, let it come upon you. Please pray for one minute. For one minute. For one minute. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We have been commanded to bless. We have been commanded to release graces. You don't have to bring the people out. I'm just speaking very quickly. In the name that is above all names, I stretch my hands upon everyone under the sound of my voice. I decree and declare the mantle that comes upon a man that brings forth intimacy in the spirit, a hunger for more of the things of God that drives you to prayer and fasting. There are at least 30 people that this grace is coming upon. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Receive that grace right now. It's a grace for the secret place. Receive that grace right now, right now, right now, right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray for someone here. The mantle of your destiny that has been looking for you. 
you may be a prophet but not know an apostle in the making but not know an entrepreneur but not know the mantle connected to your call i release it let it rest upon you now let let it rest upon you now let it rest upon you now help them please let it rest upon you now was he praying in the name of jesus the miracle of revelation the spirit of revelation the anointing that can wash a man's eyes with eyes self that you may see maybe not for everybody but there are people right now the spirit of revelation is coming upon you receive that impartation now access to the mysteries of scripture access to the mysteries of scripture receive that grace right now receive the help them please my god receive that grace right now the eyes that see the eyes that see the eyes that see every darkness in your bible study every darkness in your study of the word that does not allow you to see for many of you the book is open but the seals have not been unlocked we unlock the seals in the spirit in the name of jesus christ Number three, I impart upon you, please hear me, the spirit of prayer and supplication. Listen, you see, prayer does so many things in the life of the believer. I have taught it here. One of the things that prayer does aside from transformation and growth is that it is a platform where supplications and petitions are made mark chapter 11 and 24 said verily verily say what things soever ye desire when ye pray that you believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have it but then prayer is also a prophetic tool for warfare and intercession james 5 13 he says is any man afflicted he said let him pray then he says the fervent and the effectual prayer of the righteous man availeth much i want to pray for you if you do not have access to the grace for prayer you will live a defeated christian life it is in the place of prayer that we even resist temptations that destroy men he said peter satan has desired to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not and when thou art converted he says strengthen your brethren i pray for you in the name of jesus let that grace that helps men pray the quickening of the spirit let it rest upon you now <laughs> hallelujah two more prayer points very quickly i want to pray for your finances please believe it don't say it is unnecessary it is very necessary especially at a time as this there is a prophetic dimension to the supplies of heaven god is able to help men as believers we have an advantage many people are financially incapacitated and it is one of the strategies of the devil he says do not be ignorant for as long as there is hunger israel will always go to egypt to look for food are we together now the only reason why israel goes to egypt is because there is no bread many of you are already at the corridors of compromise because of financial inconsistencies let me pray for you it is true that god can send a raven to come to brook cherith and bring bread for elijah in the name of jesus christ anyone here under the influence of my voice going through any rough financial season by the power of the prophetic come out of it now come out of it now come out of it now 
Come out of it now. Come out of it now. And I decree and declare the kind of favor that your destiny requires to scale to heights unimagined. I stand by the God who helps men, even Ebenezer. I speak to you in the name of Jesus. May help gravitate towards you. The ministry of destiny help us be activated over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, let me declare over the remaining 11 months of this year, February included, the path of the just, the Bible says, is as a shining light. That means no month should be greater, no, no, no previous month should be your greatest. The next month, in progressive succession, I speak over you, March be greater than February. April be greater than March May be greater than April June be greater than May July be greater than June August be greater than July September be greater than August October be greater than September November be greater than October May December be your greatest month this year in the name of Jesus Christ